But the key point is why Aladdin Dao can bring so many DeFi professionals on their initial reactions. Now about this point, I'm going to tell you on my team analysis. So as usual, this is my portfolio strategy. So I only work in assets in Bitcoin and all the work which is related to these seven categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my portfolio strategy, please check out other video about my portfolio strategy. And here's my video name, okay? And in today's earning down major matching category is here, number one, B2C dApps, especially it's a DeFi aggregator applications. So which means that it's a pretty high potential project. And also they focus on DeFi space. So, you know, these, you know, three to five category, Decentralized stablecoin, DEX, and a decentralized lending, also another matching category too. Okay? As usual, I'm gonna apply the six and five points to start for the pain points, products, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 point here, so the total score is 30 point, 30. And also, if you want to deepen your understanding about my how I'm gonna analyze each point here, please check out my other video about my Arcoin investment strategy. And here's my video link, okay? Then here's my total score for RD DAO as of now 25.5 points. And this is, I'm gonna only recommend investment in those total score is higher than 25 points. So, from this perspective, I'm gonna recommend investment in RD DAO AOD tokens. And from here, I'm gonna tell you the reasons. Okay? Then, let's start from here. Number one, pain point analysis. So, here is big pain points in DeFi market. So, for DeFi, to cross the chasm to minimize friction costs for crypto investors to choose right farming products is pretty critical. Let me tell you the background here. First of all, DeFi is so rapidly growing these days. Literally, it's a killer solution on the blockchain space. So the total value asset lock size in DeFi as of today is over 18 billion. Now, as you can see, it's huge growth continuously these days. It's amazing. But the still, on one analysis, you know, DeFi market itself is not the crossing chasm yet. So for your reference, as usual, this is a chasm theory. Chasm theory based one, we have maybe five queues of this. Starting from innovator, early adapter, early majority, chasm here, and early majority, late majority, and late mass. Okay? Once we can look at the major player in the internet industry, such as Google, Facebook, and Amazon, all players already cross the chasm. Why? It's simply because they're going to provide they're gonna provide super easy to use, practically useful products for the every single user on the internet space, which is over 4 billion in a global basis. So the same requirements also pretty critical for the blockchain industry too, especially DeFi, because DeFi is a current solution on the blockchain space. Then once we look at the current you know, DeFi asset management market, currently you know, a lot of is focused on it. As you can see, here's a major product of DeFi space, such as Young Finance, Budget L, or Vesper or Convex, there is already over a few hundreds of asset management products, the both product on right on this you know, DeFi asset management market. Which means that every single retail investor, including you, have to choose right both product for you by yourself. Simply say it's painful. So if someone can solve this issue, which means that effectively help you find out the right product for you, it's extremely helpful. This is a major issue. So this is a major pain point that Arundin Dao is attacking to solve, okay? Then from here, it's a product analysis. So here's the Arundin Dao product concept. Triangle relationships, Arundin Dao, DeFi project, and yield farming. One of the killer solutions of the Arundin Dao is they're gonna provide creative services for every single asset management board product on the DeFi space. You know, from their community, all the time they're going to actively propose any kind of you know, new asset management board products. From here, RD DAO, they're going to have the brewing member, selected DeFi professionals who can accurately analyze the potential and the risk level of the each you know, board product. Then they're going to build the consensus inside there and then they're going to recommend those products to the, every single e farmer in the crypto space, which means that every single retail investor like you. Then you immediately allocate your assets and these recommended DeFi products here. 
Man, these, you know, selection process also pretty decent as model. They gotta take the dual approach. The talent hunter nominates both candidates who later on elected democratically by LD token holders. And the second, community nominations. Anyone can either self-nominate or to be nominated by the LD token holders. Then by leveraging those two ways, they're gonna actively manage those in a board member, DeFi professional, to accurately identify and recommend most high potential DeFi products or you know, those in a DeFi products is perfectly sweet to your needs. Okay? And then once we're gonna think about the those in a curation approach, which reminds me the YZZ model. The YZZ is pretty successful, you know, game five products. And YZZ all the time pretty active to find out the new high potential NFT game in the virtual space. Then how they're gonna identify those high potential game is just like a grassroots approach. You know, why is easy token holder, an active community member, all the time playing the interesting game of virtual space, and they're gonna propose high potential game to the why is easy doubt. Inside there, they're gonna have a lot of discussions, and then finally they're gonna select which NFT game they're gonna put their resources, not only about the financial support, but also any kind of you know, activism support for each game here. You know, why is easy focus on NFT gaming space? They are the DAO focusing on entire DeFi space. That's a similarity between these products. This one is a current 41 board candidates for initial elections as of September 2021. Then once we're going to put each profile member here, you can see more detailed information. Then you can you know, check out that each DeFi professional's profile here. And then all of them are pretty active DeFi investor. That is why all the time they can manage you know, around over 10 million for their you know, DeFi investment stuff. They also in you know, that apply certain of the squatting model to evaluation about you know, those capability as a DeFi professional. So this one is pretty you know, decentralized model to elect a DeFi professional for their product curation stuff. But the key point is why RDDA can bring so many DeFi professionals on their initial reactions. Now about this point, I'm gonna tell you on my team analysis. Okay? Then here's kind of a you know, top page of the RDDA project. So as you can see here now, you know, they already selected four major products, which they you know, highest recommends, all right? Then of course, anytime, they're gonna accept new, you know, proposal here. So every single you know, LD token holder or community member can apply these you know, new suggestions here. So it's pretty democratic model, this is good. Here's actually also unique points about how they're gonna run these you know, curated, you know, DeFi asset product recommendations. Once you can allocate your asset into any kind of products recommended on RBDAO with the creation model, of course you can receive certain regular APY return based on your allocations. But additionally, you also can receive LD token, kind of additional return on this one. It's pretty great. Then also they're gonna apply the DCRB model to this you know, LD distribution model. Then for those users who don't know about the VECRB model, let me explain with this one. The VECRB model is a key successful driver of the you know, rapid increase of the car finance TBL. The car finance, you know, combined with Uniswap and SushiSwap, provide CRV staking solutions. Then once you're gonna stake the CRV token on car finance, you can choose one of the two options for the staking benefits. First one is CRV token reward, and the other one is VECRV token rewards. Then once you're gonna choose you know, this CRV reward token, only CRV reward tokens, that's it. But once you're gonna choose this one, VECRV, it's a variety of benefits you can take on the staking model. For example, voting rights for CRV DAO governance model, also a share of the 50% of the trading fee. It's pretty great. And also up to 2.5 times boosted CRV rewards for liquidity provider compared with this CRV rewards only. So simply say, everyone wants to choose this one, right? Especially because of this one, up to 2.5 times boosted CRV rewards for liquidity providers. It's amazingly beneficial. But because of this unique feature, this you know, DEX TVL, September 2021, here's total TVL of the car finance. It's already overwhelmed, miss of the sushi swap. Then how the car finance achieved this stat is actually convex finance. So convex finance is run by car finance, and then this product similar to the young finance. Then look at this TVL size. It's overwhelming young finance, as you can see here, right? 
because you know convex finance model they can apply the DECRB model as I told you that 2.5 times boosted reward because those boosted reward those retail investors staking more CRB assets they can get the higher boosted rewards that is why a lot of lots of crypto investors especially DeFi professionals investment in their token to the convex finance so almost over 50 percent of the tbl on the car finance as you can see here is held by convex finance this means once ardindao applied a similar model here their tbl also rapidly growing up that's the key thing i want you to understand here okay then here is value card portion analysis so ardindao here currently they don't have any kind of direct competitor at this moment but they have a couple of indirect competitors. First one is Young Finance and then the Reef. Then about the frictionless for investors' product choice is Ardindao, of course, score A because they're gonna take the curation model. But Young Finance is not that quite good. But Reef Finance, they're gonna provide a little bit unique user experiences, especially very different from the Ardindao. So I also put the score A here. Next one is uh, transparency for product development and selections. Yeah, finance, of course it's A, because it's fully decentralized that their, their DAO ecosystem is pretty active. Then Arden DAO, also their origin, starting from the decentralized model, and for the detail I can tell you later, but I also put the square here. Okay? Then Leaf Finance is still a little bit cross model, so I score C here. Then think about the only uniqueness as of now about RD DAO is this one, boosted real model. These features, the Yang Finance, Leaf Finance, have not developed that yet. Then, so thinking about the competitiveness of the Aradina model, it's currently boosted we are here. Then for your reference, why I think the Young Finance is an indirect competitor? Because Young Finance these days, just like a portal site, any kind of DeFi votes product for the retail investor. So they already partnered with you know Budgetel, Pico, and Cream and Apocalypse. And also a new player will come here too. Once Young Finance also developed a pretty simple integrated UI and also curated experiences, that would be also great slats for the RD down too, okay? And the other one is this one, the finance. They also apply a pretty unique user experience here. They already set the risk model here for the retail investor, low, medium, high. Once they can decide the cash allocation for this risk level model, then they can choose their favorite products, all right? So this UI is pretty effective way to help the user to effectively manage their portfolio. So it's a different UX design model compared with RD DAO, but to me, this is also indirect competitor for the RD DAO from the user experience perspective. That's the key things I want you to understand here too, okay? Then number three, team analysis. So here's RD DAO member. Actually, we can identify only one person for the full-time base one, it's Shari Wu. As you know, I already have the you know, great live interview with her, and also she not gonna so actively open her career background, but it's pretty clear that she's a great financial specialist to develop this project, all right? Then through the discussion with her, I can tell you that adding down starting model as a DeFi project, it's pretty similar to the Bitcoin and the Young Finance. That's another thing I want you to understand here. Then I'm gonna also see the pretty high potential for this DAO formation here because of their investor and advisory team, pretty professional and influential. For example, Alexander, he's a founder of the Dragonfly, one of the major crypto funds in the virtual space. Ashwin, also he's an active investor from the Dragonfly too. And Ha, he's a co-founder of the Umar. And then next one, Kai, he's also the core member of the Synthetix, one of the major derivative decks in crypto space. And the fifth guy, Roba, he's also the one of the core member of the Compound. You see this here? They are so special and professional on the DeFi space. Then those players, including other, pretty active to help Charlie to develop the you know, pretty effective DAO ecosystem. This is amazing. Okay. Then number four, execution power analysis. So still the RD DAO is pretty early stage project, so we don't have a lot of stats to analyze their potential or execution power as of now. But one of the great reference for us is this one. Their TVL for their liquidity pool system. So they're gonna provide you know, LD pair such as East LD on Uniswap or like you know LD in USDC and car finance still. Their TVL size within three days already reached over 500 million. This is pretty you know, powerful execution power of their community member. 
with these stats, I'm still recognized that the pretty high potential of this project, okay? Because once we're gonna compare, you know, GZ to TVL size with asset management players such as Lendium, Bajadel, almost same level. Of course, we cannot likely compare with these stats with the RDDAO, but for reference, as you can see here, how the community power of the RDDAO is pretty powerful. Uh, also pretty active and deep engagement for this project, okay? Then another element to analyze the execution power is this one. So as we know these days, Rook is pretty high potential project in the NFT space. Then once the root is getting live on the project, Arlindao community immediately make the new proposal that Arlindao also should provide liquidity pool on a root mining model, LD and root you know, pair on a Uniswap. You know, these you know, activeness and also agileness of the DAO community, as we can see here, that huge potential power as a DeFi player in the crypto space. Okay? And then number five, token economy analysis. So these are the token economy design metrics which I made, and the major matching category of the RDDAO is here. DAPS as a DeFi aggregator, also DEX, DStablecoin, D Lending. Okay? Then this is my analysis for the network effects on the LD. Of course, it's just still initial stage, so that is why I see that some of the elements see the hypothetical one. So that's the things I want to understand here. Then this is the starting point. Crypto assets holder feels annoying to choice, right farming bots. So those people, they're gonna move their assets into the Ardin DAO, then user can frictionlessly can find the right bots product. Also, you know, those retail investors securely and safely can gain better performance than their direct choice. So they can achieve more better customer experiences. So this is their primary growth engine for active user growth, okay? Here's second engine growth, asset growth, or the ALD tokens. By leveraging this primary growth engine here, this is the critical elements they have to achieve on the second growth spiral. Staking incentives for LD tokens, such as boost reward or something. This model here, all the time they can achieve less token supply on the exchange, so that is why they can achieve less than inflation on LD token, so they can achieve the steady asset value growth on the LD token, which also provide a better customer experiences here, then they can maximize their network effect on LD tokens. This is also pretty critical element for their success in long term. Okay? Then, as usual, this is a benchmark analysis as of September 2021. So, on my analysis, major benchmark player for the RD DAO is two. First one is BlackRock, the other one is Baksha Hathaway. So, to me, the RD DAO simply says it's going to decentralize BlackRock. So, from this perspective, of course, their market cap is a benchmark. You know, so RD now current market cap is 70 million, then BlackRock current market cap is 150 billion. Okay? Then once they're gonna elevate or evolve their products or platform player, it's much more successful way. Of course, also we can target on decentralized Baksha Hathaway. Current market cap of Baksha Hathaway is 625 billion. Still, as you can see here, that their product model is pretty high potential from this benchmark analysis. Then to get over these two major players on the financial industry, one of the killer solutions that RD now need to focus on as of now is creation and staking. That will be the key as of now. Okay? Then about governance DAO. Their product itself is DAO based one from the start. So once we can look at their DAO governance website or RD DAO, it's pretty active all the time. Currently they have over 100 members. Even they're gonna just start the project very early stage. This number is great, okay? All right, number six, hype cycle analysis. So here is Gartner hype cycle analysis, blockchain technology 2021 versions, and a major matching category of the RD DAO is here. Number one, decentralized applications. Then the other one is DeFi, of course, and then currently they do not have, you know, NFT product yet, but, you know, as I told you that, you know, they are also working on Route 2, this would be an you know, indirect matching category. Then once they got fully working on NFT product too, they can also leverage this you know, high potential momentum here too. Since you know all the time these you know DApps, DeFi, and fungible and also NFT token stuff, it's all the time pretty hot investment topics on the blockchain space. So adding that can leverage such limited momentum from these three elements. Okay? Then finally then total swap dates. So about pain points, I set the 5.0 without any questions, as I told you that. DeFi aggregations, it's pretty important killer solution area on the DeFi space. 
especially crossing the chasm, which means that we're gonna make the Google or Facebook level product of the device space. So 5.0. Product 4.0 still is pretty early stage, but there are you know these plans commercial approach is pretty you know accurate directions to scale their product, so 4.0. Team level 4.5. As I told you that their team is fully decentralized one. They don't have any kind of official entity. And their active supporter, as I told you in the previous slide, it's pretty influential and powerful. So, you know, I said the 4.5 here. And the execution power, 4.0. It's still early stage, but once we're gonna look at you know, their threshold level of TBL, I'm gonna see the certain level of potential here, so I said the 4.0 here. Token economy, 4.0. Once we're gonna look at you know, their pool candidates, it's pretty defined professional player out there. I'm gonna see the start delivery you know, growth potential here, and in parallel, since they are also planning to apply the you know, car finance boost grant model here, I'm gonna see the huge potential out there too. So still potential level, but I set the 4.0 here. Okay? Hype cycle 4.0. As I told you, NFT, DeFi, DApps, all the pretty popular topics in the blockchain space. And since early now, we only focus on DeFi aggregation player, which is the you know, highest potential of DeFi space. So from the potential evaluation perspective, I set the 4.0. So the total score is 25.5 points. So my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So from this perspective, I'm gonna recommend investment in RDDAO token, LD, okay? For the RDDAO, I'm gonna see the huge potential that RDDAO could be the decentralized black rock of Berkshire Hathaway. That's what I'm thinking about, okay? Then if you have any kind of questions related to my analysis, you can think about to join my membership program, live Q&A sessions. So every week, I'm gonna provide a live Q&A session for, for my member, and then there, I'm gonna answer you every single question related to this video or any other video that I make. Also, I know you're busy. That is why you can post your question in advance on these live Q&A sessions. Now, I'm gonna answer your question on the live stream time, and then you can check out my recorded video later. So for more detail, please check out my other video. And then here's my video link, okay? All right, so that is all this time. So I'm gonna make this video for the educational purpose. So I'm not gonna guarantee any kind of certain level of investment return with this video or any other video that I make. But I truly hope that my video probably help you guys understand about high potential about crypto and blockchain space. So I'm going to make a lot of videos in crypto and blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.